Are you curious about gut health? How to get started? How to stay motivated? How do you know if it's even working? What are some tips and some resources? Then this is the video for you. I am talking with Samantha Craig, who started her gut healing journey about three years ago. She shares all kinds of information. So I am Dr. Kelly. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. If you're returning, welcome back. Please remember that if you do like this video, to like it, share it with other people if you think it could be helpful for them. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Kelly. I'm so How's excited to see you. Me too. Yeah, so I'm so grateful that you agreed to come on because you always have helpful things to share with people, even though you don't necessarily like to be on camera in the limelight, right? <laughs> but we're going to pretend like not lots of people are watching and just talk to me about gut health. Is that cool? Yes. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. So for, you know, I was thinking about what do I want to ask Sam? Cause you have all these great tips, but I think I have to start with you more than anybody I have ever met, like have embraced gut healing in a way that, I mean, you took the information and you really did it. Some people take the information, they want to do the stuff, but they just don't do the stuff. They can't quit the, the hard things to quit, or they have a hard time adding things in or whatever that is. So talk to me about one kind of how you got started. Like, how were you motivated enough to, to stick with it and just, I guess, get it done? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I, I mean, to be honest, it didn't at first, it just didn't click. There was, cause I, um, like thinking about, you know, when I first met you mm -hmm. and was working with you and I was learning all of these wellness things and like hearing gut health over and over again. And like, it just wasn't clicking. I, you know, I would go home at the end of the day and I was like, okay, work is over. Like, <laughs> you know, like that it was, yeah, work yeah, yeah. so it, it didn't, it That's didn't apply true. to me at first. And then there came a point where I like needed it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. Like, I'm going to try going gluten-free because mm -hmm. you had been saying it over and over again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try going dairy-free because I had been hearing it. Um, and so like slowly I started, I think I cut out gluten and dairy. Mm -hmm. um, I started drinking bone broth. I like made my own bone broth. It was like just little things here and there that I would um, kind of start incorporating. And I was like, oh my gosh, it works. Yeah. Yay. Like, <laughs> right. But I'm and glad to hear you say that though. Cause I mean, looking back, it's you, two years ago, you wrote that um, blog article from, from my right. website about gut health on a budget. And so it's been a while, but I'm glad to hear you say that it, it actually didn't sink in, that it really yeah. did take you some time because I think that's helpful for people. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause it looked like from the outside, I just remember you like just embracing it and doing all these things. And at some point it started working. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there was so what had happened was I think I was working with you and I went through a really tough breakup and I was oh, like, yeah, I was in a, just a tough spot. And I was like, I like, I don't know what to do. I did not know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I can't be doing what I'm doing right now. Like that is definitely not helpful. It's not healing. And so I had started incorporating things and I was like, oh, wow, like this is really working and to be fair like as far as it goes for motivation and discipline I mean I was a college athlete so I know yeah I like thought. being able to get <laughs> myself to do something was not something I was unaccustomed to yeah um, something hard <laughs> not right. just getting yourself to do something but something hard yeah yeah I forgot about the breakup um because that was a while ago too yeah so 
your anxiety was up pretty high as I recall around that time. Is that right? I I had a lot of anxiety. I was, um, I was planning on going back to school, but I wasn't really making the right decisions to do that. Like I wasn't working towards that. It was just something that was kind of like, seemed a little bit out of reach at the time. Right. Right. Um, And so, isn't that funny? Yeah. I mean, I'm uh, just thinking about like all the things that you've accomplished. You did go back to school. You went to graduate school. You've completed graduate school. Now you're back studying nutrition Mm -hmm. and making videos about gut healing on your Instagram. So that's, yeah. yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. When you kind of like push it together in a timeline, it's like, oh, wow. There's a lot of stuff that I've done actually. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I I sent, I was sending you that text of like, I had this fear when you asked me to like do a video, I was like, but what if I don't know anything? (laughs) Like literally I was like, what if she asked me something and I don't know? Like, but uh, that's just like not fair to do to myself after two years of like fully doing the work. You know, so much that's (laughs) the whole thing. And it's really just about your experience because when you share your experience, that helps other people. They're like, oh, I've been there. My anxiety was really up. I couldn't get myself to make the steps to do some of the things I really wanted to do. Um, But you were able to do that. So you started sort of slow. At some point it clicked it. Like, okay, I'm just going to quit the gluten and see what happens. I'm just going to quit the dairy. And then adding the bone broth, you also added some other things like minerals, uh, what else? Anything else that was so, sort of easy? Yeah, I started doing the the mineral drops. Mm-hmm. I started cooking a lot, which was helpful. Yeah. Making a lot of like vegetables, which was something that wasn't very common in my diet prior. Yeah. Um, and like, really, I just stopped eating fast food. Yeah, the processed shit stuff. <laughs> <laughs> It was, yeah, it was a big part of my diet, especially being around, you know, young college people. It was like Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell. It's just easy to get to. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And as an athlete, it's funny because you were very fit. So you could pretty much get away with eating other anything really because you were fit, but you knew you didn't feel good. And that's kind of the type. Yeah. I say now that I'm, I'm in much better shape than I was as a college athlete. Yeah. Because I, I understand like recovery. I understand, you know, like what my body can do. And I feel so much better doing things, working yeah. out I feel better. Yeah. So tell, tell me what you're doing now. Like, what is, are you still gluten-free? Are you um, dairy or any of those things? So I'll do um, whole milk cheese. I'll do mm-hmm. whole milk. I try to avoid like the non-dairy milks, which was something I was doing for a little bit, but now I've kind of moved to like the nut to- and oat and yeah. Unless yeah. Um, there's a couple brands that I've found that only have like almonds and water or, mm-hmm. um, like cashews and water ones that have, don't have the gums and the preservatives and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'll do those. And then for the most part, gluten is out. I'll occasionally try it and kind Mm -hmm. of see how I feel. I don't notice a ton of issues with it anymore. Um, which I think is a great sign of healing. That's a great sign. Yeah. 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 (laughs) But I know like personally, I'm like, it, it doesn't have any benefit to me necessarily. Right. So it's not something that I'm like, oh, well, I need to get that in. It's like, mm-hmm. it's okay. It slips in here and there. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful, to, for, especially if it slips in to not be down for two or three days or to have your mood really affected. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So that's, you're doing those things. So a little bit of dairy's back in too. Mm-hmm. What else is 
kind of the main things that you think are the most helpful to your body? Um, I eat a lot of meat, a wide variety of meat. I try to eat, um, you know, beef, steak, salmon, um, occasionally cod. I love cod, Mm -hmm. shrimp, just like chicken, not as much, but chicken. Yeah. Uh, Lots of, I like meat is usually what I aim to be the biggest portion on my plate. And then, um, a lot of like vegetables. I do, I do fine with vegetables. I don't notice any issues besides like Brussels sprouts. Um, (laughs) which I think a lot of people have (laughs) issues. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But you don't have like, you don't have the thyroid stuff. Um, you don't have issues with oxalates and like achiness. You didn't have any of that. So yeah, that makes sense that you're fine on some of the, the cleaner nut milk. I call it nut juice, it's not milk, but you know, those, those uh-huh. kinds of things. Um, and lots of veg. Cause you were, well, you were eating a lot of processor, but you didn't need a lot of meat. Like it took you a little while to work with the meat and cook the meat. Yeah. <laughs> and you eat a yeah, lot of that- eggs too, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I eat well, and I get told constantly that it's to my detriment, but I remain that, you know, my two eggs a day is, yeah, is and, very good for me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's working for you, but you, you weren't, you, I remember when you didn't even want to touch the meat to cook it. Yeah. I, I had a lot of trouble with like raw cooking meat from raw I would buy like the already cooked frozen ones which unfortunately a lot of times have some stuff in them to keep them looking nice um but it worked for the time being and I kind of worked my way up to cooking my own stuff that's important for people too because a lot of people are like I don't cook or I don't even know how to get that much meat and yeah so yeah when I that's that's a good um thing when I first started I wasn't focused on um, organic. I wasn't focused on, like, I just, I did what I, cause when I first started, I was on a budget. And so I was like, right. I can't afford to do a lot of the things that I know might be better. I just need to like do what I can. Yes. Uh, which was get vegetables regardless mm-hmm. of what's in them, get fruit regard, like just, just get stuff. real whole food and get yeah. off the crap. Yeah. yeah. But you didn't do a ton of sugar. Were you a sugar person? before? Um, No, I had, I had like severely cut sugar too. I was doing like only dark chocolate, like, (laughs) which became like something that I was leaning on. And I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. (laughs) You you know, I could talk about that all day. So yeah, a little bit of issue when mine went way past medicinal, um, (laughs) with the dark chocolate, but it's all in phases. I think people need to hear that too. Like you have to start where you can start. Just do what you can to get the the junk out, to stop the processed stuff, to get rid of the sugar, to eat real food and see what works in your body. Because obviously some things work in your body now that when you first started, didn't, because I know you were frightened of some things too. Like you had some allergic reactions. Like I, I, I'm with you. I (laughs) I've had to really work on once you've had a weird reaction to something. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a lot of mental um, power to like, get yourself to try things again. So you want to talk about that a little bit or (laughs) not touching that? No, no, we can talk about that. I, um, yeah, I did kind of have a spell where like food would fully send me into certain foods would send me into a panic attack because I was using a lot of brain power, but I was like fully convinced that I was allergic. And so if you aren't familiar with panic attacks, they can cause physical symptoms just similar to what a allergic reaction might be like, or a heart attack might be like, or right. Or (laughs) an asthma attack or something. Yeah. Yes. 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 So it's hard to decipher what's a panic attack sometimes and what's something, you know, an actual allergic react. I completely agree. Right. So, but some, you've just done so much healing that mm-hmm. you've been able to incorporate a lot and you know what works in your body now. 
Well, and, and there was there was a lot of time of like practicing, mm-hmm. trying things, and and being okay if my body felt weird for a little bit, and yeah. being like, "Yep, is it food or are you just thinking about this more than you usually would with any other food?" Yeah, same. I'm still in the process, but I also feel like I had to decipher a little bit of what's a healing response. Because sometimes I think my body really needed something, especially with like a supplement. I would Mm -hmm. feel weird and not sure if this is right for me, but it was actually a healing or even a paradoxical response where your body really needs, it's really deficient, but you're going to feel a little weird Mm -hmm. um, at first. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. I'm like, well, then how do you know the difference? You just start to practice slowly and you see if you're okay. And right. if you're okay in an hour or two hours, you're, you know, and you just have to not to, to taste things that, you know, you have an anaphylactic reaction to, but if there are things that you are, feel like are pretty safe, but you want to try them out, you know? Right. Yeah. That and if was it's yeah. to get through. Yeah. And if it doesn't feel safe, I don't, I say, don't do it. There are plenty of other, you know, if you can find foods that feel safe to you, then, then that's what you need to do, especially whole foods. But, mm-hmm. but you know how I feel about fish, right? Um, I, yeah. That's what I was thinking of the shellfish, but you eat shellfish and you're fine with shellfish. Yeah. Mostly a shrimp shellfish yeah. crustacean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, mostly shrimp. Yeah. Not really yeah. anything else unless I'm like at a restaurant. Yeah. So do you feel like the sun getting in the sun was helpful as much as the food or, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For healing. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Just my days would be almost like 90% better just by seeing the sunrise. Yeah. Especially like the longer I was out there, the better I was, like the better I felt during the day, which like Mm-hmm. it's like okay how do you notice that but you do you start to notice that like okay you're like you start to wake up a little bit earlier um you like every everything just felt better I don't even know how to explain it honestly like I felt like I was more productive I didn't feel the need to like drink as much coffee I felt calmer I felt um just like happier, better, Mm -hmm. a little less cynical. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And it, it's kind of subtle at first, I think for people as you do it more. And then when you skip a day, it's kind of like when you go gluten-free and then you get some gluten and you feel awful and you're like, Oh, okay. But it it takes time. Right. Mm -hmm. Same. I felt like with the sun, with sunrise, but also like the vitamin D, I feel like is really important. Yeah. Some now that we're getting D. to a place where it's like warmer and sunnier, I'm like, I'm like giddy because I'm yeah. so excited for it to be sunny. Yeah. It hasn't been as sunny here as it has been in Florida. I am. So. <laughs> I'm lucky. But, yeah. but so tell me if you had to break it down for people of like, what's the most important thing that you've done? in healing your gut? Oh, um, honestly, it's like, I would say just having grace with myself because as someone who's like very strict, I can be very controlling. Like I am very disciplined. I, I did do a really good job of doing everything that I was supposed to do. And then when I didn't do it, it was like, well, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Like you're going to mess this up for it. Like just the full kind of like spiral of thoughts of like, this isn't what you're supposed to be doing, which I think people I'm, I, I've had experience falling into, and I've heard other people talk about falling into that where it's like, Sure. You know, you don't wake up and see the sunrise that day. And it's like, 
mm-hmm. well, this day's off. I can eat like I, you know, right. Then I, the whole day, then it's like yeah, a, it's uh, like an I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing today, so I might as well do other things that like I that don't feel good. Right. Yeah, but then beating up on yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've had to work on the self compassion and the grace piece. And you're very literal. It feels like it's important to you to do the right thing right here, right now in a very, and can get a little rigid. Probably. I don't see that a lot um, from you because you're always very calm on the outside and very, Mm -hmm. you know, but on the inside, it seems like there's, there was more turmoil going on there for a while. Yes, absolutely. Which I, I've made leaps and bounds to yeah. just be more calm with myself as well. Yeah, which is amazing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so some of the feelings, some of the things, how do you know your gut's been healing? Like, how would people know? Um, I don't, I don't have digestive issues as much. Like when they come, i you just start to notice things and you notice like you start to notice oh okay I am bloated or like I do have gas or I like haven't used the bathroom in three days that's not a good thing right whereas like when I was in college I might not have noticed those things right so I might have been like oh I'm fine Mm -hmm. but now I'm like no, I know what fine feels like. It's basically the absence of problems. Right. Digestively. Yeah. Anything else how do you, that you would like say, well, this has improved so much since I heal, been healing my gut. Yeah. I would say energy. I used yeah. to take a lot of naps, mm. yeah. and, like have issues with just getting a good night's sleep, being alert throughout the day. Yeah. So sleep is improved. Energy is improved. Digestion is better. And you're noticing more. I think that's the key too. Mm-hmm. What about mental health? Any changes mentally? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, do you want to talk, bring those yeah. up? Yeah. Um, I would say less anxiety. And yeah. also again, I notice it. So like I can tell when I'm feeling irritable I can tell when I'm feeling kind of down and so like I can give myself what I need in those times Mm -hmm. um trying to think of anything else Mm -hmm. I feel a lot more um like I said you know when I was first starting it felt like there were a lot of things that were just out of reach Uh like like going to grad school it felt out of reach things that like I wanted to do. I just didn't know how. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I have like a little bit more, like a clearer picture of like, okay, if I want something, you ask questions, like figure Mm -hmm. out what you want to do and how you do that. And kind of like make steps towards that because things don't just happen for you, which (laughs) is what I was hoping would be, but just fall in your lap. Yeah. 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 You're also a hard worker. Like you, I mean, you do, you're a good student. You were, you, well, you still, now you're back doing nutrition. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're a perpetual student. Um, yeah. Some of us just stay that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you know, and that you're willing to, that's probably being the athlete, like you mentioned too, but you're also willing to do hard things and to work hard if you need to, to figure mm-hmm. things out and not quit. That's once, yeah. You have anything to say about commitment? Like, do you think it once you commit, does it make a difference, or what do you think about that? Um, commitment. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one's tough because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people can commit to things that aren't good. Like, you know, people might stick with something that's not good for them yeah. for the sake of commitment. So I think commitment, you have to be very careful and be aware of, you know, what is the, what's the ROI on this? What am I getting out of this? Is there anything that's like, not just benefiting me, but just like benefiting anyone in general. And it is important to think of yourself in that instance too, but 
Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I think I was trying to think of like the motivation to stick with something, even when yeah. it's hard. Well, it doesn't have to be a straight line. No. In fact, it can, probably won't be. <laughs> so it might, yeah, it most likely will not be. So if your goal is to be gluten free for a month and halfway through you find yourself eating gluten, it's mm -hmm. it, you can easily be like, okay, well, I guess that's over. Or you can be like, no, I think I, I think I want to go back to it. Like, I think I want to stick with it. Right. It, like that doesn't, what's coming to mind is, um, I was listening to a podcast by Dak Shepard on armchair expert. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been sober for, I think, 17 years mm -hmm. and had a relapse, like, a, I think a year ago or so. Right. And he was, he was talking about it and he was saying, you know, after 17 years, if I'm at day one mm -hmm. after relapsing, like, I'm going to go do everything that I want to do. Cause I'm at day one, like I might as well, you know, just wait till tomorrow, mm -hmm. but you can't discount those 17 years of like the work that he's put in and like, just mm -hmm. all of that. And I, it really stuck with me. Cause it's like, you don't have to just like, it's not necessarily starting, like you're never starting over. You're just kind of like mm -hmm. making your way back to the path. Mm -hmm. Right. So it doesn't have to be a straight line. Almost always when there's addiction, um, there, you know, relapse is part of the process. Right. And so to figure out, you know, what you're going to do, however many day ones you have to have, but it's the same if it's not addiction is what we're saying too. Like if you've just decided, Hey, I want to cut this. I want to cut some junk out. I'm not going to do fast food for a mm -hmm. month. And then next thing you know, you're starving and you're no, you're in the middle of somewhere where you have to have something right. and you freak out and you just get your, you get your drive through not to beat up on yourself and not to make that the, the avalanche that we were talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. You, you don't have to make that a big deal. You can say, okay, that notice how you feel, notice what your energy is doing. And then, you know, the next meal that you have, you make a different choice. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, you yeah, give yourself some grace and get some support or whatever you have to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause it can be tricky. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I remember hearing somebody say, you know, surviving cancer is hard. Having babies, you know, birthing babies is hard. Changing your food is not hard. I was like, are you kidding? I'd rather have another baby. I mean, not now, but I'm saying, I think having babies was easier than changing my food for me. Some of the food. Not well, the there's food. having babies. There's, uh, it's like pretty clear information about what you're supposed to do when it comes to food. It is the most confusing yeah. area that you could, I mean, yeah, there's vegan, there's carnivore, like two very opposite sides of the spectrum. And then there's like everything, everything in falls the in between. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the word healthy and then just mm -hmm. like. Oh, the word wellness too. Very, yeah. It's what like, it what even does mean? that even mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. And what's, what works in your body might not work in my body. And that's, and it could, we could agree that that's healthy. Like it's a, a whole food, but I can't handle it and mm -hmm. you can, or vice versa. So mm -hmm. I think that's, it, you're right. It can, that is the tricky part too, is figuring out what's going to be best for you and all of the information out there. Okay. So if you had favorite resources for people, maybe just getting started resources and then maybe some more advanced resources, I don't know, whatever you've got, what would you suggest? Well, I got really into reading about it. Mm -hmm. um, the first book I read was Primal Body, Primal Mind mm -hmm. by Nora Gedgadis, mm -hmm. I think is what you say it. Yeah. Um, and that like, it changed my life because it was basically saying everything that you're told is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? 
Yeah. Um, I remember so, how important that book was for you. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I still refer to it. I know it's older, um, but I just find it so interesting to, to read, you know, mm-hmm. it, it goes into detail about everything. So it's really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I read both of David Perlmutter's, um, mm-hmm. the, I read Grain Brain mm-hmm. and Brain Maker, yep. which I thought were really inspiring mm-hmm. because he, he does provide information, but when he talks about just kind of like where his, where he was able to bring his patients, it's like very much like, oh, wow. Like, if yeah. someone can go through that much healing, yes. like right. it's probably going to do some really good stuff for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, of those two, which did you like one better than the other? Yeah. I think I, I think I liked brain maker better yeah. because, yeah. um, like my grandmother had Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I think of like, okay, if that's genetic and I have the power to control how my genes are expressed, like Right. I don't have to worry of like, oh, am I going to get it? It's like, no, there's steps that you take to mm-hmm. like prevent it. Right. Which mm-hmm. I don't think is, I don't think is widely shared. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. It, once you know, it seems like everybody knows because you run into it more. Um, but no, not everybody realizes that you are given the genes that you have, that's your blueprint, but we control the expression with lifestyle Mm -hmm. of those genetics. So that's exciting news. Yeah. And I think Perlmutter is very inspiring, hopeful. Right. Right. So those are good resources. Um, I've read, I've read all three of those at least two or three times. Mm -hmm. Um, I I find it helpful to just like go back and listen again, because Mm -hmm. There's so much that you miss. I, yeah. I listen to both of Dr. Perlmutter's books uh-huh. and then I have both of them to reference, but mm-hmm. just listening to his was great because it's mm-hmm. just like stories. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, so when I was um, writing my white paper for my master's, I was doing all this research on like stress resilience. And because mm-hmm. I had access to the library, I was reading like a bunch of articles on like stress in the microbiome and stress Mm -hmm. in the brain. And so that was like another way that I was getting a lot of really good information. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think Instagram can, and YouTube can be really helpful. um, If you're Mm -hmm. just kind of like taking everything with a grain of salt, like Mm -hmm. being aware of like, okay, maybe I'll give that a try and see how it works. Like don't take everything as like uh, truth necessarily, Mm -hmm. but something that you can use to your advantage, I think. Right. See what resonates with you. Hear some different opinions. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's probably good advice too, to take it with a grain of salt because um, just because it might be true, but it might not work for you. Yes, I agree there. And and then realizing who to follow and who not to follow. Right. And I was going to say, like, I think it's important to something that I do is all kind of like when there's someone that I have, like, and I feel an aversion towards their account or what they're saying, I try to figure out why, like, if it's someone saying that, um, like all meat is bad, Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, okay what else are you saying? Like, what are, what are the good things that you're saying? Like they're like, I usually tend to find that they have like helpful things, um, regardless of, you know, what they're saying is good and what they're saying is bad. Like there's still some helpful things. And I think it's important to like, understand what, um, you know, people in the vegan community are saying people in the vegetarian community are saying, and like being able to understand Mm -hmm. everything so that when someone's like I'm vegetarian it's like okay great like Mm -hmm. if that's working for you like here are the things that you may be missing which I know is something that I've seen you do so it's like Mm -hmm. it's like that's great here's some things like for for you to think about right just to consider Mm -hmm. um right because I don't want to tell anybody I don't want to push 
meat on people, even though I'm a big advocate for yeah. animal based way of eating. Cause that's where I see the most healing. I always say that, but I also believe in food freedom. The opposite isn't necessarily the opposite. And so right. to just stay curious, like another, another point of the circle. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, but you know, but people can live healthy lives doing lots of different things. So, yeah. So those are helpful resources. Anything else? Any other resources? Um, of course, man's search for meaning. Yeah. I think I read it in two days and then reread it like a week later. And it was like, I think I read that probably two years ago. And is that the first time you read it? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. I yeah. think I had written down his name. I like spelled it incorrectly because you told me like the name. I was like, okay. Oh, Victor Frankel. Yeah. Yo, yo, that's a book that will change your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not about food. <laughs> it's yeah. Not about food at all. It was, yeah. yeah, it's an incredible book. Yes. Yeah. I think that's something that is not, should be on everybody's reading list if possible Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah okay so some books are there any particular people that you follow on insta that you think are helpful um dr kelly ritter okay (laughs) yeah thanks yeah yours Mm. you've got a whole gut health um uh, instagram page now yes i do i'm working on it (laughs) Mm-hmm. Slowly but surely. There's somebody called uh, Vitality Melanie. I think yeah, you like her. Yeah. yeah she, she posts a lot of just like, I, uh, she, um, I think she has a lot of great information. And um, so there's self illy, healthily. Oh. It's spelled like H E A L T H I L L I E. Oh. Um, so she came from like the fitness bodybuilding side Mm -hmm. and like talks a lot about, you know, a lot of the supplements that people take, like Mm -hmm. the protein powders, the protein bars, the pre-workouts, which I think is neat, like desperately needed in that area because it's a very much calories in calories out kind Mm -hmm. of mentality. mentality. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's all about, you know, physique over Mm -hmm. health (laughs) yeah um which you know it is what the sport is but I think there's a way to do it without compromising your mental health and your gut health and right and so she's showing that those powders and all of the stuff is probably not the best choice yeah right got it yeah and I think it's very widely accepted that people think that just throw a smoothie together with your protein shake and your protein bar and you, and that is not actually right. what we would think is, is real food. That's helpful, mm-hmm. particularly for gut health, but yeah. And um, the, the last one is live Vite. Mm-hmm. Ryan, I think his name is Ryan Carter. He's in London or uh-huh. London. Um, he's, he's kind of in the same world. He was in like the fitness and he mm-hmm. talks about like, um, just like balancing your plate well with whole foods and kind of like has that grace side of it. Oh, that's right. nice. Like, yeah. Right. He's, you know, he was all about sunshine and yeah, uh, doing like specific workouts for just mm-hmm. like understanding different workouts and like doing sprints in the morning versus running long distance and stuff. Yeah. Like that. I'm into sprints and weights these days. Yeah. And okay. yeah. Prepare to be a kind of bad at it. Like prepare right. to not know what you're doing. And like when people right. ask you be like, I, I don't know. I'm just trying yeah. some things. Yeah. Like I, that's another thing that, you know, was weird was, how much people would ask me about it and like have not really issues with it, but it was like, Oh, well, you're not eating bread. Like why? You know, it was like, yeah. Do you, do you have a problem with me not eating bread? Cause I don't have a problem with it. Right. Cause it would make you feel better if I did right. that. 
Um, but yeah, some interesting things and people ask a lot of questions. And then also when you do in different things, people are worried about you. Like loved ones will be like, are you sure you should be eating that much meat? And like you said, the eggs, people are worried about your egg consumption. And, but you've done your own research and continue yeah. to do your own research. And I think that's an important piece too. Not only for your checking it out in your own body, <laughs> Do you feel good? Is your digestion good? Is your energy good? Is your mood stable? Then that's probably you're moving in the right direction, but mm -hmm. also getting your hands on some information about, mm -hmm. you know, are eggs healthy, which right. I think they are very healthy. Right. Yeah. I've seen something where it shows like two different news articles and it's like, the egg is the healthy, healthiest food. And then another one that's like, the egg is the worst thing that you could put in your body. Yeah. So it's like, no wonder people are confused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And have opinions. And sometimes because they're just worried about you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Which is fair. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you find it now that you're kind of a couple of years in at least now? Right. Yeah. I, um, I, it's really funny how many, uh, you know, when I tell people like that, this is something that I'm interested, they just immediately kind of tell me what they eat, <laughs> uh, which I find so fascinating. Yeah. It's like my favorite thing. They're like, oh, well, I eat a lot of cheese. I'm like, cheese is great. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're like, waiting for you to tell of, you. I try not to eat meat. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like very funny. But for me, um, yeah. it's, it's like, I mean, it's, absolutely a passion of mine so it's yeah. I love cooking I love like going to the farmer's market trying new things mm -hmm. um and and just like understanding that it I don't have to be perfect yeah. and I'm not and like even if I'm sharing information me not being perfect doesn't make me a fraud oh like right it's fair to like right. yeah tell people, you know, what's good. And then also be like, it's okay to not do what's good. Or, you know, I don't want to say good and bad, but right. Right. Ideal. Um, good like for me. That might not Ideal be for me. Right. At, at restaurants now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got I... used to being kind of a hassle. Yeah. It's just like, but I know how to navigate the menu too. Like I, I know which things are going to feel good. I know which things aren't going to feel good. Like I can make modifications. I know which questions to ask, which is something that mm -hmm. it, it felt like more of a hassle for me before. And now it's kind of like, sorry, that's. This is how, do you find that people are pretty accommodating or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For yeah. the most part. Yeah. Um, I think it's becoming more common for people to like not have gluten or not have corn or not have, you know, certain mm -hmm. ingredients. And so a lot of restaurants are kind of like prepared. Yeah. That. Yeah. And I think servers are getting clear on, you know, food allergies and what people, but yeah, sometimes it can be a little awkward when you're, I, I mean, just to not be the one that always needs something different, like can't eat off the menu has to be different. Um, mm -hmm. but then also realizing that it's not worth feeling awful. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And knowing where you can go and what you can get is helpful mm -hmm. for sure. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So any yeah. other kind of final thoughts or tips about gut healing or Nutrition and since you're studying nutrition. Mm -hmm. I, not really. I would just say like, it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. It's worth the hassle. It's, <laughs> it's worth, worth the it's investment. Worth, yeah, it's worth the investment. It's worth the work. It's worth like, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. For the mental clarity, for the days, more days of feeling really, really good. Yeah definitely worth it. I would yeah. agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to just like age. Like I, I feel like, you know, like yeah. it's not, I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to have like ailments, physical ailments or mental ailments. Like I just, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm 
going to be doing this for the rest of my life. And so I'm excited to just like go through life and feel good. Yeah, that is exciting for you. <laughs> I'm super excited. I mean, it's ex- I mean, I know at 50, it's a little different, but I'm excited for me too, but I'm really excited for you to be, you know, to have your whole life in front of you and to have already figured out this piece. You have some other things I'm sure you'll figure out (laughs) that'll come along and whatever, but you know, your life is really good right now. And that, and to be able to enjoy it because you feel good. That's nice. And you'll be walking on your hands when you're 80 doing hands. Well, 70s, 70s, the goal. If I can get to 80, that's going to be pretty great. Oh, I made up 80. You said 70. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. Doing, um, yeah. Handstands or walking. I I can't walk on my hands now, so I guess I'll have to learn. Hmm. I can do a handstand, but. Okay. I feel (laughs) like you're going to be able to do that one day. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Samantha, for your time. I loved having you on here. I think it will be very helpful for other people. Um, Yeah, to see all different ages of people healing their gut. It's doable, even in grad school. Now that you're done, you have a little more cash to spend some money on real food. But yeah, (laughs) nice. Nice. Yes. Thank you, Kelly. Yes. Mm -hmm.